our VIC Fellowship, and VIC stands for Vaccine Information Coalition. You're listening to Progressive Radio Network, the most listened to, commercial free, and truth radio program in the world. My name is Renee, and our show is titled What in the Cell is Going On? We're on every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, which can be accessed live on prn.fm or later on the front page of our vacinfo.org website. Our guest today is once again Joy Garner from thecontrolgroup.org, and she'll be continue revealing how Father is leading her to prove that vaccines belong in the garbage can. Welcome, Joy. Hello. Hi. Hey. (laughs) I thought we were going to set up uh, the the, the Skype. I had that all ready, and uh, the guy that put me through didn't know anything about it, so I don't know. I guess oh, I'll do my okay. Phone I then. had him call your cell phone. I apologize. Misunderstanding. We ran out of time, Joy, last week's show. So please share with the audience what your group's all about. And we just thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, so my name is Joy Garner. I'm the founder of the Control Group. We formed this group because of a growing concern that neither the FDA, CDC, World Health Organization, none of these organizations let alone any direct uh, big pharma companies, were willing to study the health of unvaccinated people. Now, I think the reasons for that are obvious, because if you were to study them, you would find out that their health is very, very different than the average vaccinated person here in the United States, um, where children are receiving, what is it, 72 shots now? And I guess... uh, they want to increase that to several hundred, from what I understand. <laughs> um, insane. Thousands uh, so, and thousands. They even have a cancer vaccine now. It's insane. Um, and I know that if they yeah. ever even did consider doing any type of study, Joy, and I'm sure you're aware too, it wouldn't be completely unvaccinated. And that's what you're after, is the completely vaccine-free children, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And the reason for that is that we're seeing a uh, stark difference in the health already, even from the anecdotal studies that have been done, as well as the early survey results we're getting, we're seeing a dramatic difference in overall health. Whereas somewhere around 50% of children in the United States that are mostly heavily vaccinated are suffering uh, severe chronic disabling diseases, really, really high uh, mortality rates for both infants and children, Uh, the highest in the industrialized world, actually, right here in the United States. If you take out the unvaccinated, you see an entirely different disease rate. Uh, What you see is almost zero of any of these problems. Now, if you go to the FDA's website and you participate in one of their cheap online anonymous surveys, they'll, for instance, be looking for things that could explain why so many children are now getting advanced rheumatoid arthritis. Now, even though the vaccine inserts list this as a a side effect, one study by Big Pharma showed 15% of the children that received that childhood vaccine did in fact come down with advanced serious rheumatoid arthritis within a two to three week range after receiving the vaccine. So you'd think the FDA would have a question about vaccines on their public health survey when they are looking to find out why we have an explosion of old age diseases in children now. But they don't. Their survey asks, uh, is your child gender confused? Are they being bullied because they're gender confused? Or they'll ask... um, Is the mother single? Do you live in a good neighborhood or a bad neighborhood? And, uh, you know, does your dog have fleas? I mean, it's they never ask whether or not the child has been medicated, and if so, what medications, as they seek to determine what's causing arthritis. And this leads me to believe that the only reason they're running these surveys, and by the way, these surveys that they do online anonymously, are used to set public health policy in the United States. So um, that's the, the, the level of science they 
conduct in order to determine what our health policy policy should be in the United States. So they never ask what what kind of medications the child takes. It looks as though the reason that they never ask is because they already know the answer. And it's in the vaccine inserts. This stuff can kill you. It can cause arthritis, asthma, every different immunological disorder known to mankind, many of which are brand new. Um, they don't want that answer. Because Cancer? so many people, <laughs> at the, they don't want to know the answer to the question. That's They're right. straining to find some sort of other explanation. As if your child, three weeks after getting a vaccine, coming down with severe rheumatoid arthritis could be explained away by gender confusion mm. um, it's, or being bullied at school. You know, uh, that's what they're doing. And what we've determined is that because that's the way they set national public health policy is based on these cheap, hackable, online, anonymous surveys, they don't even have any paper to back it up. We've decided that ours, according to the federal rules of evidence, are going to be much more substantial. We're running a study. It's voluntary. It's random to the extent that we don't care what other factors are going on here. Um, the only thing we want to know is, are you vaccinated and how's your health? Excellent. Have you been diagnosed with any of these horrible diseases that are listed in the vaccine inserts? So whereas the average out there is about 50% of the children are now suffering these diseases, and yet unvaccinated children appear to be almost immune to these diseases. Hmm. Um, I think we can pretty much ascertain that the single most uh, effective preventative health measure any American can take is to avoid vaccines. Just like if you run a, a survey of, you know, who's got lung cancer and who doesn't, what's the national average? Oh, what do you know? People who don't smoke have almost no lung cancer in comparison to people who do or in comparison to the national averages. We can set public health policy by that. We can say, okay, well, that means maybe you're not going to be as likely to get lung cancer if you don't smoke. So these are standard accepted um, according to the federal judge's bench guides, these are accepted as having the most weight in evidence. We do not need to study vaccinated health because the national averages show us what that is. And that's all. Uh, we don't have to fight to get that into evidence. Those are published average statistics. Um, so, yeah, we're basing this not on getting the blessings of Big Pharma for conducting it. We don't care what they have to say about what we're doing. What we're doing is based on the federal rules of evidence and based on what the federal judges bench guides tell them they are to do in terms of giving things a certain weight in evidence. That's all we're doing. So we're conducting a study. The more responses we get, the more powerful our case is going to be. So we're reaching out to anyone who is either unvaccinated or their children are unvaccinated or they know anyone whose children are unvaccinated or they think they know someone who knows someone. We're asking people to spread the word. The website is thecontrolgroup.org where you can download a hard copy print of the survey. We do need it mailed to us. Um, but you can fill it out anonymously. Uh, that's perfectly admissible. We already have a substantial number of people involved in this study that are willing to identify themselves, and damn it, they want their day in court. They're hoping they get to testify because many people decided to stop vaccinating after the first child or two was severely injured from a vaccine, and it was because of that that they then refuse to vaccinate any more of their children, no matter what anyone told them. And that's and exactly what, that's, that was exactly what I chose to do as well. 
as an you know, having that? an injured child, I've covered it on past shows that my first child, Casey, was the victim, of course, that I blindly held down and let them poison. Um, and then I had a little boy, Corey. He was 20 months younger with no vaccines, as well as a little girl I had after Casey passed away with no vaccines. And, and of course, no no comparison. I mean, the, the, no comparison in their health. For two years, I even teach this in my presentation. I did my own clinical study because Corey was two years old when Casey passed away at four. And I saw with my own two eyes the difference. They catch a little virus. He'd run a 10, 15 minute fever that the body's designed to do to kill off a virus. And she would end the week in the hospital for dehydration the year before she passed. So nobody's going to convince me. And you're absolutely right. Many parents choose not to vaccinate after they've had an injured child. It is a very common story. I have over the past few months spoken to literally thousands of mothers mm. who, and some fathers who are they all seem to have the same story. Yep. It's, you know, I, 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 one woman, God bless her. Oh, she's crying her eyes out. She's calling me from Connecticut. And mm-hmm. she says, well, my first three children are totally dysfunctional. They'll never have a normal life. Uh, they're, they're all vaccine injured. And it took, I trusted my doctor so much that it took the third child for me to say, okay, three strikes and you're out. Mm. And so she's only got one normal child mm. and out of four. Mm, and these both. other three kids going to need help for the rest of their lives. They're never going to be independent. And it's the, these stories are endless. And I think that even with the updated statistics on things like autism, uh, we're here in California ever since they instituted the last round of uh, vaccine mandates, It's now up to 1 in 38 that they're admitting to that have uh, full-blown autism. And the the problem is when you look down your own street in this this state, you see that it's much higher than that. Mm -hmm. And they're only only looking at the autism. It's, wait a minute, what about all these kids that are in wheelchairs and they have advanced arthritis at the age of eight? You know, um, they're never going to have a normal life either, even if their brain somehow managed to survive this nightmare. Um, this is this is a um, this is a national emergency, and so we're 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 preparing a report to go alongside, uh, not just going into court and demanding an immediate injunction against uh, mandated vaccines. But we're also going to be submitting a report to the NSA because when you run the numbers, and they're backed by people like MIT scientists, Mm -hmm. you see that we are only a few years away, if that, from suffering a complete economic collapse as a nation. Mm -hmm. We will not survive Big Pharma as a nation. They are about to swallow us whole. This Mm -hmm. is an emergency. Now, there are lots of other things we need to be worried about. Uh, GMOs and fluoride and all this other stuff, but I gotta say, we have really, really clear and profound evidence staring us in the face right now that the single most effective way to destroy the population is by direct injection. And now they're demanding that the government use its police powers to forcibly inject us. Mm-hmm. And that's where it's like, okay, we, we have to stop this. We, we don't have any choice. And, and begging crooked politicians that have already been bribed isn't helping. It's not stopping this. The only thing that we can do at this point is get our butts in to federal court, to a different branch of government that has its own powers. Now, the majority of vaccine-related lawsuits, they never make it into court because of the National Vaccine Injury Act. Mm-hmm. What I did find out is that if you're not asking for money, you can put these manufacturers, vaccine manufacturers, under a microscope before a jury in a real court of law with real due process. We're not asking for damages or liability. We're just asking for protection. We want an injunction. The evidence backs us up that that's what's required right now, not just to save children, but to save our nation. This is a national security emergency. There has been, if you took every single disease epic of in our nation's history and you put it all into a a one-year time span, 
it does it just it doesn't even come close to the health epidemic we're facing right now. There's no way they can say continue to say, well, yeah, we know we're sacrificing some people mm. uh, when we do, but but it's for public health. No, no, no. The the crazy uh, ancient sacrifice ritual has reached the point where they are massacring half of our children. That's right. They know that that's what they're doing. They do not care. It's part of a bigger agenda. There's a lot of greed involved. You can't tell me anymore that there's a single innocent pediatrician out there. Not one of them is that ignorant. They are the ones seeing the damage on the front lines every day. They know what those shots are doing. I just watched a video of a guy who turned from his wicked ways. He's a pediatrician, and he fessed up, and he was crying. He said, I can't believe I I didn't stop this sooner. I, I went home to my wife, and I had to explain to her that because I wasn't going to kill and maim children for a living anymore, mm. we were going to lose about $1.7 million extra in income per year that I was getting in benefits. Big Pharma money uh, uh, laundered through the insurance companies and headed right into the hands of the pediatricians in exchange for each pediatrician maintaining a 100% vaccination rate in their practice. And you cannot tell me they don't know. They're the ones that get the tearful phone calls from the parents. They're the ones that get the calls from the emergency room. Where is our doctor? He just got the shot today or yesterday. He's in convulsions. He's dying. You know, those doctors know. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? They rush down to the emergency room, if you're lucky, only to sequester the parents and, and say, oh, no. There's no way it's with the vaccine. That the big pharma told me that's been ruled out as a potential cause, and that really doesn't jive with the side effects that we're reading in the vaccine inserts. Now, does it? Mm-hmm. They pay for those but that's studies. That's what the doctors we, we all tell you. Yeah. They pay for those so, studies. Um, they pay any for questions the uh, about what we're doing and and why? Excuse me. And any questions about what we're doing? Uh, with the control uh, group and and one no, doing it. I'm 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 very excited uh, because, like I oh, said, uh, we know without question that the vaccines are the underlying cause of not only the autism epidemic, um, of probably every other child re- real- realistically, um, but then also cancer. I mean, they're finding SV40, simian virus, you know, from the monkey viruses and the vaccines in cancer, which is every other person as well. I mean, so we of yeah. all know that, and we teach this all over, that the vaccines are the underlying cause. Even Dr. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Eisenstein before before he passed he said with no vaccines there's no cancer and no autism so absolutely and you know another thing i think it was back in uh, 2014 the pharmaceutical companies who had already for decades been growing the viruses in human cancer tumors mm. they were being found out mm-hmm. and so they came to the fda to ask for approval after the fact um, and, you know, the morality car wash, oh, we were approved at some point. Um, and I lucked out and stumbled on the transcripts. Um, I now have them downloaded. I'll probably be publishing them on our website, thecontrolgroup.org. Um, that site's going to go crazy in the next few months, so pay attention to it. Um, anyway, the FDA uh, held a hearing. Well, after a couple hours. And it produced a transcript. And I got a chance to study that thing carefully, and it was disgusting and it was appalling. Mm. There was only one doctor with the, with, the, with the courage to stand up and say, well, of course, you do realize we are about to cause and probably have been causing a massive cancer epidemic in the United States of America with the vaccines. Mm-hmm. And the only response that came back was, first, shut him up and get him out of here. So you didn't hear from him anymore. And then the next response was, is there any way we can change the rules that require us to list the ingredients of vaccines? That, and they spent the next hour and a half arguing about that. And their justification? Well, if the public knows it's dangerous, they might stop getting their vaccines. And vaccines are good for us. That is their ethical consideration. Mm-hmm. 
so, I mean, that is who we're dealing with. I think everybody is pretty much is, is waking up to this. It's scary and sad that there are still people out there that can look at the facts and still deny it. And nine times out of ten, the only people that will really heavily resist the truth are doctors and people in pharma. People, basically, who profit from maiming and murdering children in this United States of America today. Mm -hmm. If they have some money coming in as a result of that destruction, they are very likely to ignore the facts, go back to the slogans that they're always hearing from the pharma reps, and go, well, they're safe. Oh, side effects can happen, but they're rare. Well, nobody's never taken the time to figure out just exactly how rare they are. And the control group dot org, we are figuring that out. We can assess a relative risk factor uh, of related to any vaccine and mm-hmm. vaccines as a whole. Because what we're finding out is that people that just don't have any pretty much don't have any of these health problems. Right. Even if they're drinking fluoride and eating fat burgers. That's right. Just, and my kids are a perfect really example kind of because my, 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 the dad of my children, they we 50-50 custody. And my children do not eat organic food. When they're with me, they do. But when they are not, they, they don't take care of themselves. And still, like you're saying, they're extremely healthy. <laughs> well, I wonder if the eugenicists at the t- behind all of this crap are really frustrated at how hard it is to kill us. I mean, they're poisoned <laughs> our water, our food, our air. You know, our drinking water has poison in it that lowers your IQ provably. And, and, and yet, somehow, we're still managing to... But you know what? The single most effective way is to directly and repeatedly inject us. Yep. That's Compromise how you depopulate. Yep. Compromise and the immune the system. People, <clears throat> Yeah, if you can get the immune system to screw up, then they yep. can distance the the uh, damage from the activity that caused it. Because a, a lot of kids like, okay, I got the shot. They seemed all right. They got a fever, but they seemed all right at first, like for the first month or two. But then a few months later, something was going wrong. And so they can distance the, uh, I mean, Hitler would have loved this. If he could have distanced himself from the poison and the death to where it was hard to connect the two, that he oh he must be so proud of these pharma companies. Oh yeah. Um, so well, yeah, even with autism, the, delayed the onset, is, the it's kids compounding don't... toxicity. It's compounding co- toxicity. So the more well, rounds they get, the more poison. Yeah, not only the cumulative damage, but okay. also the fact that once your immune system is disrupted and it's attacking your own tissues, it might take two months before it does so much brain damage by literally liquefying and eating your brain. It may take a couple months before it starts to affect you in a way that's visible to the outside world. That's right. And just so the audience is aware, I'm sure they are if they've listened to any past shows, um, to to give you a visual here. You know, you're bypassing our creator's defenses. Our creator gives us fever, vomiting, diarrhea. You're bypassing those defenses, which he intends for it to come through the nose or the mouth. And you're going straight to the bloodstream with the witch's brew. That's in vaccinations, mm-hmm. the mercury, the formaldehyde, the aluminum, the blood of animals. They use live mediums, people. Live cancer mediums, kidneys cells. of monkeys. Huh? And, and specifically, they use the cancer tumor stem cells. And yes. they're, they're making this sick mutation where they join the duplicative uh, supercharge of a virus with a cancer tumor cell, stem cell, that's basically a manufacturing plant for more cancer cells. And that is what they're injecting directly into our bloodstream with these vaccines. And they don't even try to hide it anymore because they feel like they don't need to because the laws are against us now. They got that immunity act and the FDA is fully bought and paid for. They're going to, they only exist to protect the profits of big pharma. Um, It's, it's a sick situation. And back to this, you know, mother nature, Look, you have mucosa all through your stomach. So if you have, you've heard the whole thing about the mercury. Oh, there's more mercury in a can of tuna. 
Yeah, but you're not injecting the can of tuna into your bloodstream. Exactly. 99.9% of the toxins in it are going to go out your pooper. Exactly. You're never going to, it's not going to go into your bloodstream because you have this thick mucosal lining in your stomach that tells it, uh, absorb this, but don't absorb that. That's mm. the whole purpose of it. Same with your skin, your uh, everything, your sinuses. There's a limit to what can get in. Um, but 100% of it's going directly into your bloodstream when they put it in a needle. So you can look at a 1,000 times or maybe even 10,000 times more effective at killing you if they inject it as opposed to us voluntarily or accidentally drinking it. When you look at the amount of just something as simple as the uh, antifreeze that they put in the vaccines, another thing most people don't know they're putting in there, um, it's propylene glycol. If you were to take an equi- that same exact amount that you find in the average vaccine and you were to inject it into your husband while he's sleeping, you will go to jail for attempted murder. Mm. That is the quantity. So the real science is over in the toxicology branch. Mm. You're never going to find it in pharma. If you go and just take the ingredients and the amounts, you can find those amounts in death penalty murder cases. You can find them in attempted murder cases where the toxicologist runs a scan, finds out what the, what the lady or the husband did to their mate for insurance or whatever. And so that's, that's the equivalent amount they're putting in babies every day and getting away with it mm-hmm. because our political system is shot to hell. Mm-hmm. These scallywags, half of our elections <clears throat> are fully rigged in the first place so when you threaten you're not going to get elected next time if you vote to forcibly inject my child they don't care they laugh at us Mm -hmm. so you know we've got that and then uh our agencies on a federal level and on a state level are completely owned and run by big pharma our medical journals they get 95 percent of their funding directly from big pharma so do you think a an, an honest study about vaccine dangers is going to ever get published in one of their journals Never. in a million years. And mm-hmm. so, therefore, you're not peer-reviewed and published. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, your science is no good. Well, not in federal court. Mm-hmm. If you got the gumption to march in there and demand a jury, you can get them to look at it, and it's up to them. It's not up to Big Pharma. And by the way, we can ask for judicial notice of the fact that these medical journals get 95% of their funding from Big Pharma. So they can bring their garbage in. They're going to have nothing to counter our uh, survey of control subjects that have never been vaccinated Uh. because of the fact they've never done any of their own studies to determine what the health is of unvaccinated people. What are they going to use to counter it? Yep. Wow. The last thing on earth they would study is the health of an unvaccinated person. Wow, wow, wow. I think it's yeah, a I brilliant idea. Forever. <laughs> brilliant idea. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it hit me when I was at the, uh, uh, at the Capitol a uh, month and a half ago, actually, a little over a month and a half ago that this all began. Um, I was standing on on the state capitol steps, and I had all my signs set up. I had a bunch of for sale signs with arrows pointing into the capitol, and it was it said "Big Pharma Special Votes for Sale," you know, murderers, whatever. I'm kind of I'm not going to be polite when they're killing our children. That's right. I mean, I, I don't care how extreme it sounds. It is extreme what they're doing. Um, if someone walked up to me and told me in a sweet voice over a cup of tea, well, you know, they're killing half our kids. Mm. I wouldn't believe them if they weren't upset about it. Yep. I'm legitimately upset about this. No, I'm not going to tone it down. Um, and so I had my sign set up, and I had a, a grave, a mock grave site set up right next to the Capitol steps where all the pharma this was the day when the uh, the pharma guys were going in and out of the Capitol to offer their bribes for votes mm. on this vaccine mandate. And so I wanted to make sure everyone saw this. And one thing I had was a mock grave site, and it was in, in loving memory of the over 43,000 children that have died just in 2018 
uh, that we know of from vaccinations, we're talking immediate death, okay? The ones that they acknowledge are a direct result of the shots. Mm -hmm. Real figures point closer to over 100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's the ones that we can go, look, this is based on this. It's also based on the the Harvard Pilgrim study, which proved that the VAERS system was only accounting for less than 1% of the deaths and injuries. Mm-hmm. So it actually adds up to about 6 million uh, uh, adverse events, is what they call it, when your kid dies or is permanently disabled. That's yeah, right. that's And there's nothing forcing event. the doctors to even report the injury. That's what's so crazy. There's no, there's no yeah, law the forcing a pediatrician to, to admit it's an injury. Well, and not only that, the last thing on earth the doctors want to do is report it because they're the ones that injected the kid. Exactly, exactly. They're and they even have control. The control. And not only that, they don't want to lose that money they get for giving all those shots. Exactly. But they also have the ability to to change the diagnosis. For instance, if my son, my unvaccinated son, goes to the pediatrician and has a cough and they know he's not vaccinated, it's pertussis. But if he had the vaccines, it'd be called bronchitis. <laughs> they have that yeah, they control. Just lie about the, yeah, they just outright lie about the diagnosis. They <laughs> do not care. This right. is a Nazi army. It is well organized and well paid and highly covetously motivated. Um, the doctor I was telling you about that did the, the little video confessing and and crying and, mm-hmm. and, and, and also talking about how upset his wife was to find out that they would not be able to live in their fancy house anymore because the mortgage mm-hmm. was too high. Um, you know, it, this is what's going on, folks. The fruit of all evil, this the love of money. Joke. They're coming for every one of us. <clears throat> we absolutely are running out of time. One That's of the right. reasons that I formed the, the control group is when I was standing on the Capitol steps, it all hit me. Mm-hmm. Why are they, I started hearing all these arguments like, why are they trying to get rid of the medical exemptions? It's only like 0.07% of us or something, right? And then I realized right then it just hit me. They don't want anyone to study unvaccinated people. Wow. They've got to get rid of them before anyone documents the difference in their health. And that's the, the very next, like two weeks later, I showed up with a big booth, homemade sign and a bunch of surveys. And I started surveying people right then and there because it was another, you know, uh, protest against forced vaccination. And it turns out there were a lot of people there didn't want to lose their medical exemptions and an awful lot of people whose children were just not vaccinated at all. And so I, I made a big stride that day. I got a big stack of surveys. And uh, that morning, my husband got up at four in the morning and put the website together and, you know, he said, hey, set anyone that you can't get to do the, the survey right there in front of you, you know, go tell them to go to the website and download it and start spreading the word. And next thing I know, I started networking a couple of doctors put me up on their facebook feeds good doctors mm-hmm. not all doctors are bad no. just the ones that are still injecting kids right <laughs> those are all bad i don't care who they are what their name is i i don't care if they are injecting children with vaccinations they're evil That's and right. greedy and frankly they're killing and maiming children for money and they don't care that's right. It really That's, is that simple. It is. It is. And just for any pediatricians listening to the show, um, I have a friend who's a pediatrician that literally will inject the orange and say your child's vaccinated. <laughs> so that's what you might want to try. <laughs> well, you know, I love that there are conscientious doctors that are trying to walk the fence here mm-hmm. where they're not going to come out publicly fighting this the way that we all need to. Um, What's happening is they're being taken out. I mean, you know, over 90 doctors have been taken out in the last couple of years. But but it's it's like, well, let's see. If the Jews had all kind of stood up at once, the Holocaust wouldn't have happened. Everyone kept hiding. We can't wait for that. No. It's obviously coming. And the more we hide from this, the more we shrink from it and, and figure, well... As long as I can hide my own kid from these needles, mm. then that's okay. No, no, no. It's not okay. They're it's eventually going to okay. get all of us. 
It's not okay. I used it's, to have people tell me that, wrong. chiropractors yeah. tell me, well, I didn't vaccinate my own child. And I'm like, what about everybody else's? <laughs> I yeah, can't even comprehend that yeah, mentality. Guess what? They're going to come for your kids. You watch. And they're going to come for every man, woman, and child in this country. They've already drafted the legislation mm -hmm. to completely criminalize the state of being unvaccinated, whether you're a child or an adult. Yep. Literally already drafted all of their politicians. They're just beta testing these early phases right now. If you think you can move to another state or that there's going to be some place to hide and mm -hmm. keep hiding, you're kidding yourself. Sorry. We all have to fight this, and we've got to fight it with everything we've got right now right. while we still can. I'm with you. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Now, what's to say that the courts are not going to be controlled by the powers that be? How are we going to be able to get it pushed forward at when, we, when you get to the top? Well, I tell you what, when I was um, fighting the Rothschilds for my, no, I'm sorry, I keep wanting to use that name. It's synonymous with Rockefeller. These were some Rockefeller trust fund babies. They didn't carry the name Rockefeller, but it's where the money, their money came from. They were trust fund babies. Mm -hmm. And they decided whimsically one day that they were just going to steal my invention and literally, you know, just steal the patent and everything and just laugh at me and say, well, there's nothing you can do because we can afford all the lawyers and you can't. Mm -hmm. And they were right. I couldn't afford the lawyers, but it didn't mean they were going to win. I went into the uh, federal district court down here in Sacramento. I'm very familiar with it. Um, and uh, it took me about a year. Uh, they had six law firms against me. One of them, mm. the most powerful in the world, Jones Day. Those mm. guys were responsible for a fraudulent transfer of my intellectual property to their clients. And I called them out on it, and they were facing fraud charges. Um, but, you know, I just kept fighting. I was down there every single day filing <laughs> something. <laughs> and I was going after their pawns and, and everything behind them. I just wouldn't stop. And... When the and I had a crooked judge to address your question, mm -hmm. I had a crooked judge. He was not following the law because he wanted to rule for the powerful people mm -hmm. and not do what was right. And um, so one thing I learned is that the minute I reached the, the case, reached a development where I was going to have direct and immediate access to the Ninth Circuit. Everybody waved their white flag, and they were ready to settle. They gave me my patent back, and I got to keep some money, and they went away. Wow. Um, and what happened is once it reached that very pivotal stage, the case, where something was about to happen that w if he had ruled against me, it would have, I would have had direct and immediate access to Ninth Circuit, that was the point where I, in my last filing that I wanted that judge to look at, it wasn't even for the other side. I didn't care at that point. I prepared it as if it were a writ to the Ninth Circuit. Wow. Just so he would know what was coming and how much of an idiot and an ass he was going to look like mm. if I was forced to show the entire case file to the Ninth Circuit. So now even more hope uh, is that Trump has recently appointed three new Ninth Circuit judges, and that has tipped the scales. Actually, the first two tipped the scales to where they are actually about saving this country now. They are making mm -hmm. rulings in favor of salvaging this republic. <laughs> mm -hmm. So whatever other, uh, you know, political leanings we have, uh, as a nation, we do have to be concerned about whether or not we're going to exist at all in a few years from now. Mm-hmm. Um, because this is an exist existential threat we're looking at. When these disabled children reach the ages where they would have otherwise been entering the workforce, mm -hmm. it's over for us. They're not only just not going to be working, they're on disability. Most of them qualify already. Right. So who's going to keep our economy going? Um, Trump has plans to start doing this merit-based immigration, which I agree with, but if we inject all of them too... <laughs> who's going to be here to support our economy? That's right. Um, so, you know, this, this goes global. This is beyond the idea of my first concern, which is the horror of the destruction of these children and the pain that it's causing these families and, and 
these human lives, I mean, these children, they end up wishing they were dead Mm -hmm. because these injuries are so serious. They end up trapped in for the rest of their life. They're in an agonizing prison. Mm -hmm. They're never going to dance. They're never going to fall in love. They're, they're never going to do any of the things that, that, mm. that we all associate as the experience of being a human being. And I cannot bear that. I will not bear that. Mm, yeah. I am going, I mean, this is my full-time job now. There is nothing else I do anymore until this is fixed. Mm, yeah. And I need other people to have that attitude. Now, okay. what we're reaching out for with the control group, which will make all the difference in the world, is don't just focus on donating, you know, $10 to us or anyone else. That's not what's going to win this. No. What's going to win this is even just a few minutes here and there over the summer telling people about this survey and getting as many people as you can to participate. Now, I have a phone conference coming up soon with the the head of that uh, Moms Across America that found the... Uh, glyphosate weed killer, the Roundup weed killer in every single childhood vaccine that they tested and in yeah. dangerous levels. Um, I'm going to be talking to her to see if we can coordinate um, some authentication so that I can bring her her evidence into court as well to further justify why we need an emergency ad- injunction. And we're not just going to stop there. That's the first phase of this battle. But once we succeed at that, a lot of the other things that we need to do urgently are going to be a lot easier to achieve. Um, and this, this unvaccinated health survey, a lot of people I've seen, especially pharma trolls, they'll see where someone's talking about the control group and the survey, and they'll say, this isn't scientific. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's perfectly scientific. The FDA sets national health policy based on anonymous online surveys, and we're going into court with paper, like hard paper. Now, Mm. a lot of them are anonymous, but they're still perfectly admissible. Um, Later in the summer, August 15th, is when we're hoping to have more than enough. So far, it looks like we will, but the more we have, the better. Mm -hmm. Um, that, That is when we're going to be taking everything over to a blind survey company, and they're not going to know who's hiring them, so they have no bias. Mm. They're just going to open envelopes and look at review things. Wow. Um, they're going to do data entry. None of the workers will have any idea why we're doing this. Mm. It's going to be blank data. And then we have statisticians uh, that have already volunteered their time. Of course, I'll have to be very careful who ends up in front of the, the judge because we don't want even a pretense of bias. Um, beyond that, this is all admissible. It's all going to work. We need to just plow forward ahead because right now I'm not hearing any better plans from anyone else. Are you? Not at all. Not at all. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm so excited. Um, now, let me ask you this, because I'm sure you probably heard of Alan Phillips, the vaccine rights mm-hmm. attorney that I've been referring people to for over 20 years. Um, they've arrested him. For, for, go ahead. They've arrested the lawyer? Yes, Alan Phillips. He's a North Carolina attorney that's been helping parents who need legal help for exemptions. Um, And like I said, I've been referring people to him for 20 years. They first requested his records and uh, he wouldn't give them because obviously it's his right not to give up his client's records. And uh, then they arrested him for contempt and then they let him go and then they rearrested him. And uh, they are, what I've heard is that their agenda is to go after the parents for neglect. This is why they're wanting the records. That's what they're moving on in California. They're going to start arresting parents for criminal medical neglect. If their child is unvaccinated and does not have a medical exemption, which they're now about to pass a bill to take away basically all medical exemptions in this state. Yep. Yep, yep, and they're yeah, selling it as, oh, it. it's okay, we're, we're, we're only going to take away the fraudulent ones. No, mm-hmm. the new standards they have basically say that unless or until your child is deathly ill or killed from a shot, they will not qualify for a medical exemption until after they are injured. And furthermore, they will only then qualify for an exemption 
against the one shot. They'll still have to get the other 68 or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, that is basically an, an elimination of all the medical exemptions. I mean, that's, that's effectively what they're doing, which means now any parent with an unvaccinated child, I don't care if they're trying to hide at home with homeschooling, their door is going to get kicked in. They're going to get found. They're trying desperately to eliminate the possibility that anyone will conduct a health survey like what the control group is doing right now before we run out of time. Wow. That, that is the only reason I can think of for them to move this quickly and this harshly when it doesn't even, there's not even a pretense of an, an argument for why they should be doing this. Our vaccination rates in the state of California are probably the highest in the nation right now. They exceed what, what the so-called pharma scientists have declared is the herd immunity level by several points. And they're coming after a few scroungy, unvaccinated kids out there. And the media machine that works for them as well, they're yep. demonizing anyone that isn't vaccinated. They're literally calling us murders and, and, and calling, you know, that Bernie Sanders did that uh, back when he was uh, running against Hillary in the primaries. He yep. was out there saying that uh, unvaccinated people are equivalent to murderers and that they should be put in jail. I mean, and, and look what they're doing in New York right now. Wouldn't you know it? The leftover families from Nazi Germany pharmacopoeia literally worked for Hitler. The same families own Merck and Bayer and all the big ones today. That's right. And what, who are they targeting in New York? The dirty, unvaccinated Jews. Yeah. Crazy, By crazy. zip code. By zip code, they're going after them. Mm. It, it, it's we're running out of time, folks. Anyone that can hear my voice, you need to be focused on getting as many surveys to us as possible and paying attention. Get on our, our news feed because we have some strategies to implement this fall as we go to battle in court. Uh, go look up the word buzz bombs from World War Two. One of the things uh, that we may well be implementing now, I've pretty much decided we're going to do it. Uh, and I've got lots of legal help on that to support that that's a good strategy. Under the uh, Vaccine Injury uh, uh, Childhood Injury Act, the mm -hmm. one that immunized Big Pharma, okay, mm -hmm. uh, me and a couple of lawyers have been studying that very, very carefully. Mm. Guess what? Every single person whose child has been vaccine injured and they've been rejected by the vaccine court and... They can't go to a regular court. They can all go down this fall, do it simultaneous to what we're doing, and they can file a small claim suit because guess what? If it's under $1,000, and I know that's not enough to make up for what's happened to your children, but if it's under $1,000, you're allowed to file, and you'll win in small claims court. Get your $1,000 at least. But more importantly, by doing that, if there are thousands of these lawsuits going on at once, Big Farm is going to have to spend ten, twenty thousand dollars per small claims action because mm -hmm. they're going to be desperate. They're they're not going to want to see ten thousand judgments against them across this country, or maybe a million. They don't care about the thousand dollars. They pay that in a second, and they're going to offer to settle with everyone. Mm -hmm. What they care about is having it on the record. And, you know, I sat and I ran the numbers. If enough people do this, we've got potentially $100 billion just in those $1,000 claims based mm. on the evidence people are going to be able to download off our from our survey once it's all published. And we're going to be setting up a model lawsuit for everyone to just be able to download. They don't have to hire a lawyer. Just go down. It only takes a few minutes to fill out a scrap of paper, hand it in pay the filing fee, 50 bucks, whatever it is, and you will get your $1,000 for sure. But more importantly, you will confound the enemy and make it that much easier for us to get what we need because they're going to be busy. See, so far, we've been on the defense, haven't we? They come in for another draconian law, and we wave our signs and we protest to prevent them from taking the rest of us out. 
So we're always on the defense, but hardly anyone's gone on the attack. No one sat down and worked out a, a strategy mm. to actually take this beast down. And guess mm. what? We have to take it down. We have to crush it. I know that sounds crazy and impossible, but it is possible. No, and we have with Father, no all things are possible. <laughs> with our it Creator, all beast. things are it possible. Is this battle is way too big for coming. us. It is a beast that is about mm. to swallow this nation whole. Mm. It has already swallowed up half our kids. They are in the process of destroying an entire generation of children. We cannot stand idly by and let this this happen. Now, if someone out there has got a better plan no. for a first phase attack, because that is just our first phase, the injunction. That's our first phase. But if someone's got a better plan, please tell us about it. Write to us at control the controlgroup.org. We will consider it. We will implement it. If it looks like the better plan, we will move all of our our activities over to, to that plan if it sounds better than this one and more likely to work. Mm. But we need to move. We, we can't just keep de- trying to defend ourselves. And, you know, I'm, I'm really frustrated. I called a – there was an emergency town hall in Sacramento recently about this uh, new bill to eliminate the medical exemptions for vaccinations. And I got notice of it. It was last week. And I wanted to go. I thought it was going to be maybe a place I could do some surveys, uh, spread some awareness about what we're doing, because we want to get an injunction to stop this crap. And I talked to the lady who organized it. I'm not going to name names here. I think that some of what she's doing is positive, but I'm real scared at some of the reactions I'm getting from people like her in the awareness community. Mm-hmm. When it comes knuckles to nails, I've been finding out from a few of the leaders that they don't want us to get an injunction. They don't want it. They won't explain why. Uh, they just go, well, we're just here to raise money and raise awareness so we can raise more awareness. And, and when I ask the question, okay, how is being aware going to save all of these people who are already aware Mm -hmm. from forced vaccination. That's right. I'm not following you. We are Uh, going to continue this joy. Emotional distress when they're forced to get vaccinated. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. We are going to continue this. You are going to be a regular guest on this show. You are so anointed in areas that I'm not anointed. You are the piece that's going to make this happen. I feel it very strongly. I'm discerning that. We are running out of time right now. Do you have any final words before I do the closure? And I want you back on the show if you're available. Not next week. We're going to be taking a break next week for the high Sabbath. Okay. Um, Yeah, but but, uh, the following Monday, I want you on if you're available, okay? Yeah, I'll, 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 we'll talk, and uh, I want to come on as often as possible because this is really important. The org is where you can find the survey. If you want, you can download as many copies as you want, take it to your church, your community, anywhere you know that there are some unvaccinated people that might want to participate. Let them know they can do it anonymously. Please mail it in to us uh, as instructed on the, on the forms, and uh, let's, let's beat this. It's win. Yes. Yes. Thank All you, right. Joy, so much. Again, audience, we're not going to have a next week's show because it is the high Sabbath of Pentecost. Shavuot, it's called. So we will be taking a break. Um, but the following Monday, if Joy's available and as often as we can get her on, because she has a piece that I don't have. And like myself, she has agreed to be a martyr for our creator to put an end to this insanity. You're listening to Vic Fellowship, and our shows can be accessed on the front page of our website on the belly of the little boy flexing his muscles. We're on every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and our contact number is 800 939 8227. If you have any questions about today's show, just call the voicemail line 862 800 688. 05 and leave your name your question and let them know it's for our what in the cell is going on show we thank progressive radio network for allowing us to give you this uncompromised truth and yeah bless